Hey y'all, Coach in the Fire here, guys. Stay swimming. Shalom. And today we're working on our 1,000th class. Oh wow. Class number 1,000. That's a lot of classes. Yeah, it is a lot of classes. I happen to be looking to see if anybody else was making videos about our channel yesterday, just being nosy. Mm -hmm. When I looked down, I saw that we had 999 videos up. Oh, wow. And so I decided to make this post asking people, you know, if they had any suggestions for the 1,000th video. Mm -hmm. We got 42 comments. Most of them, praise our Father in Heaven, we were actually able to um, answer the comments simply with a video. Just was able to go pick one of the 1,000 videos and just give them a link to it. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. But I'm looking down here. One uh, question we got from Changing Management. We didn't have a video for it. Okay. He asked about the thousand year reign of Christ. Mm, okay. All right. So, and that's kind of like what we're going to do in this class. So, I think it fits. Okay. We're actually going to talk about the curse of Adam. The curse of Adam. Curse of Adam. And what we're going to show in this class is how the curse is over. Oh, okay. We're about to be over and we're about to start this one thousand year reign and even talk about what it's going to be about. Okay. All right, so it's going to be a real interesting class. It may take us a while to do it, so you guys know, just sit back and be prepared to learn some of the specifics of this curse mm -hmm. when it started, how long it'll last, when it'll end, what it'll look like when it ends. Okay. All right, now, one of the first places that I want to bring you to is over to another channel called God A Minute. Mm -hmm. The reason why is I want to reference some data that I got from his channel. Okay. Down in the playlist of this video, he offers you this table. But before I show you this table, I want to, I don't, I guess I couldn't say give it some credibility. Mm -hmm. Because, well, let me just jump right to it. You guys can check out the whole video. Um... Uh, let me just jump down to my little timestamp here because I want you guys to hear something specifically about this table where this guy, his name is uh, Brother Samuel, they call him. Mm -hmm. And I think he's in some foreign country somewhere. I can't remember where exactly. But he's drawing up this table, but and it's really detailed information. We're going to get into this thing. It's really, we're going to use it to, um, to support what I'm going to say about the uh, curse being over here. But uh, let, me, let me just play it. You'll see what I mean right here. Um, I actually um, came to a video. I think most of you actually know, uh, maybe Coach Inafine. He actually uploads pretty good stuff on his channel. So, he actually made one video, video that um, motivated me to actually search for the real year yeah. that we're in, right? So, that's why I created this, uh, this chart. And by the way, I'm going to add to what Sam is saying here. There's actually a lot of people with this theory that we are somewhere in the, in the late 5994, you know, give or take, within that year, this is not like a new theory. Um, so I think the most exciting thing about this is um, that if we are in fact in 5,094, the true year of God's calendar, then we would expect the rapture to happen soon, and for the millennial reign to start in somewhere around 6,000 or 6,001, and that's what we're talking about here. That's why this is very exciting. But go ahead, Sam. All right, so... He's getting this information from our channel. Well, he didn't actually say it. Let me, let, me, let me try to repeat what he said. He saw one of my videos that prompted him to do research to find what he called the real year that we're in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and it's real interesting because he didn't do it the way I did it at all. Right. He okay. went through a whole other method of doing it. He kind of did it the easy way. I think you say he did it backwards. Yeah, he did it backwards, starting and, you know, calculated the numbers backwards. So... Praise our Father in Heaven. Um, I was able to contribute to his efforts. You know, he didn't have to go through all of the scripture like I did, pulling them out one by one. He mm -hmm. was, so he had a lot of the data provided for him. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Now, right there, he's talking about the five nine nine four. Mm -hmm. Now, you see this. Uh, the other guy, uh, I guess the God a minute guy, he kind of blew it off as to say, he's, you know, everybody's coming up with five nine nine four. Yeah, he sort of um, wanted to. Uh, dismiss your efforts it seemed to me uh, as if you know this is nothing new everybody knows this yeah, um, yeah so 
But well, the thing about it, like I said, he's he's went through um, this using this table, this information, and he's actually come up with the same date that I did. Okay. Yeah. You know, despite the fact whether they you know want to give me credit for it at all, I don't I don't really you know need credit. You know, mm -hmm. well, I'm not trying to be famous or anything, but what's important here is that he's actually confirming what we have or what we came up with the 5994 that he did this earlier last year he did this kind of around the memorial blowing the trumpets or something like that right there at the end of um, uh, last year 5993 mm -hmm. and I wish I had read this uh, completely because see look right here what he says right here okay the year 587 B.C. is a historical set date and is important to calculate all years back to creation from there. With this method, we can conclude that Adam was created in the year 397.3 B.C. Now hold up now, that 587 date, mm -hmm. um, that actually came to me in a dream. Mm. Yeah, I was working on it. You, you remember this because I, do remember I, that, yeah. I spend weeks and weeks and weeks trying to get this missing information. These 19 years that we hear about Nebuchadnezzar was throwing things off. And I had a dream. Um, and in this dream, I was in the store and the thing that I was purchasing, I can't remember the exact numbers. They were exact in a dream, but it came out to $19 and some change. Mm -hmm. And when I went to, when I applied those numbers into the data chart that I was working on, it actually fit perfectly. But anyway, that's not important. Go ahead. With this method, we can conclude that Adam was created in the year 3973 B.C. Now, this confirm you could confirm this using Luke, mm -hmm. the book of Luke, when it tells you, you know, when the Messiah came the first time during the um, time of Tiberius. See, I can't remember exactly the verse, but understanding that that was 28 AD. And then, you know, from the other books that the Messiah was supposed to come exactly 4,000 years after Adam, you could just back up and get that date real easy. If that is the case and we write the year 2021, we have the year 5993 since creation. We know that the millennial reign of Christ begins around the year 6001 and ends in the year 7000. That's that 1000 year reign. So this kind of ties us to that uh, that uh, comment. You know, the person was asking mm -hmm. about the millennial reign. Mm -hmm. It starts uh, 601. So that's one thing they could put down as, you know, in their information is that we have, what, seven years until this millennial reign starts? As a matter of fact, I think he said, go ahead. What did he say? We also know that there is a seven year tribulation that takes place before the millennial reign of Christ. This means that the rapture of the church should take place no later than the year 5994, according to theory. All right. Now, hold up right there, because what he's saying is absolutely true. Matter of fact, if we look over in the prophecy given to Daniel chapter 12, we can get more specific on some of this time here that he's talking about with this 5994 date. Okay. Now, this is not the beginning of the millennial reign. This is actually the end of Jacob's trouble. Mm -hmm. This date right here, January the 13th, 2022, corresponds to the 10th day of the 10th month in the year 5994. Okay. Now, I stress again that he and I are on the same page. You know, he said it the way it sounded like to me, he didn't trust my data. Mm -hmm. He watched it. I mean, he, you listen to it again. He sounded like he watched the video and he decided, you know what? I'm going to go figure this out for myself. Mm -hmm. And then he came up with the same dates. Right. He even started to look at this date right here later on in the video. Let's skip ahead. He goes through the process of how he came up with these numbers and all of this in the video right there at, you know, starting at about seven minutes or so. But then when you jump to 41 minutes, look what he say. Also got this from uh, uh, Coach Unified. It's pretty, pretty uh, cool stuff, actually. 600. So what happened in 605 BC? Uh, the king Nebuchadnezzar uh, break, breaks off the daily sacrifice, or he, he just disrupts the daily sacrifices of the Israelites and carries them off to Babylon. There Daniel receives the vision described in chapter 12. Okay, fast forward 1290 Gentile years. What happened in 686? 1290 Days later, after Daniel received the vision, the abomination that caused desolation was set up in the middle of Jerusalem. 
So he goes on, you know, mm -hmm. and explains it, it, this chart. He, he explains this. You know, he explains it from a different perspective. Right. You know, you got to understand this. This is kind of over in the Esau camp. You know, I guess that's why he contacted God a minute instead of contacting our camp. You know, those guys are on a different trajectory. But anyway, the, the point here is that, you know, he, he's coming up with these same numbers. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what he's talking about according to this theory. This theory that he's talking about is Daniel. <laughs> Daniel and what we saw over there. But go ahead. As we can see from the chronology, we are approximately in this year. And then he calculates, it shows you the calculation. Again, he was right there in the end of 2021, and so he came up with 5993. Right. Right? And so all it is to say that, you know, yeah, we know what we're talking about. Exactly. We're right here at the, at the door of mm -hmm. the end of this thing. Mm -hmm. But let's go over and let's show you what this thing is. I want to bring you over here to something that the Father showed me in, in Genesis this morning. Mm -hmm. This is a brand new revelation. It, you guys may already know this, but it hit me so deep I almost cried. Mm. He's given so many revelations this time. Jacob's trouble is over. That's what it means when it said knowledge will increase. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's back like the old days when, you know, we was wanting to put out five and six videos a day. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're having to, you know, kind of slow down a little bit and do other stuff. Right. Anyway, you, you, when you come down through this story, and I'm going to run through this pretty quickly, um, what he told me this morning, um, and I plan, because I plan to do it in another video, spend more time on it, but the thing about it, when you go down through here, and you look at this story in Genesis chapter 1, the first thing that you notice was our Father, our Creator, mm -hmm. right? And then the first thing that he did was he created light. Yes. Okay. And then you look at the next thing that he created, talking about, you know, the firmament and that planet and all of this stuff. Right. This is who we know as our earthly or our universal mother. Okay. This environment in which we live, the cartoons used to call her Mother Nature. Right. Right. This is, um, I forgot how the third estimate describes her, mm. but this is, yeah, this is that lady. Mm. This is this is her. Mm. This is that spirit that you see being created in all of, you know, the oceans, the seas, the fruits and all of this stuff. And then after he creates this in this universe, this this kind of in, this environment that can sustain life. That's what this mother does. She helps keep us alive. Yes. yes. You got to understand that's where our bodies and everything comes from. Yes. You know, we get our, our spirit from our father, but everything else we get from her. Yes. And she's the one who takes care of it and nurtures it. Wow. Yeah. That is and big. That is big. And then check this out. The next thing that he created was his calendar. Okay. So he, there was him, then light, then our mother, next his calendar, mm -hmm. right? So that kind of lends to the importance of his calendar. And then once you get down here, I took me a little mi minute to come up with like a one word to sum up all of these animals and stuff right here. But the word that I came up with was the breath of life. The breath of life. When all when he sent up all of these animals out of the water, he, and I read it in the King James version of the Bible, but these animals receive the breath of life. It's like he brewed breath into them. into the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everything received mm -hmm. this breath of life. So mm -hmm. the breath came next. And right after that, he created food. Correct. Right there, you see in verse 24, it's talking about livestock and all of this. You mm -hmm. see what this is building up to, mm -hmm. right? Because the next thing he creates is man. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you see this, this huge pattern right here? Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is big. And then the, after he creates man, the first thing he does is he starts giving him the commandment. And look what the commandment is related to the Sabbath day. In fact, if you go to the next chapter, he gets into a lot of detail about the Sabbath day. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at this, you have him creating light, then our mother, then our calendar, then our breath, food, and then he created us. And the first thing he told us to do mm -hmm. was the Sabbath day. Right. Mm -hmm. That is big. That is big. And I can see where a lot of lot of great classes can be done off of that. But we know that that tree of knowledge got them in trouble. Yes. Right. So they cause they ate of this tree 
and that caused this so-called curse. Right. We, I'm sure everybody heard that story. Mm -hmm. Well, let's look very specifically at this curse. Okay. If you would look right here in chapter three, starting at verse 17. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow you shall eat of it all the days of thy life. So what is this curse? What is it saying there? Um, it seems as if the ground, in this verse, the ground was cursed because of Adam. The ground is cursed. Right. And Adam is forced to eat out of this so-called cursed ground. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's go on to the next. Verse 18. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. What's cursed here? Again, it's the ground. The thorns and the thistles that's coming out of the yeah, ground. Yeah. Thorns and thistles are uh, now being produced, um, coming out of the ground and... As we know, it's very hard to uh, maneuver ground when yeah. you have thorns and thistles. Uh, and it and also points to the condition of the soil and all yes. that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Other stuff doesn't grow well when mm -hmm. thorns and thistles like to grow there. Right. We'll look at verse 19. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shall thou return. There's the ground again. Yes. So the curses of Adam was the soil, the ground, food production. It's going to make it tough on him mm -hmm. when he's out there trying to work Yes. to produce this food so that he can eat and produce and save his family. If you go back to look at the snake, he, he had to lay on his belly. The woman had to go through pain and sorrow. They had different kinds of curses. But it seems like all of the curses on Adam are not on him directly, right? but on the ground and the way he has to now provide for his family. Right. Mm -hmm. Making it harder to work right yes and that's mm -hmm. going to be real important here because the curses of adam was that he was going to have to work what it say right there sweat of thy face mm -hmm. so, so thou eat bread yeah so so adam got to work yeah you know i i've read this many of times and i i believe that i've had thoughts about how Adam himself was not cursed when everything else, the woman, like you said, she was cursed directly and the serpent was cursed directly, but Adam was not. Um, so the ground, the elements was cursed because of him, because yeah. of this um, disobedience. Yeah, so you got stuff like um, the soil not being so fertile. You got stuff like bugs, like nematodes growing in the soil. You got uh, the pH level becoming out of balance and different kind of stuff that normally, a, a, you know, Adam would have had these angels that would have been taking care of. They were the ones who was, you know, um, doing all this stuff beforehand. Adam was just there to tend it. Mm -hmm. Well, once he transgressed, he kind of lost all of that help, and now he's got to do it on his own. Okay, so is this about food, or is this about what? What is this about? The curse of Adam? Right. The, what is the curse of Adam? Is it food? Or is it work to get the food? Or is it both? It seems as if it's both. Okay, well, I could agree. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's go on. Now, for the next verses, we're going to come out of the book called The First Book of Adam and Eve. Mm, okay. There's actually two books called Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. But right. these books actually detail... Um, the life of Adam and Eve, even before they got kicked out of the garden, immediately after they got kicked out of the garden, all the way up to time until they left the holy mountain, even. Okay. I think it even gets into Noah a little bit. Okay. But the thing about it, it actually talks about the... Matter of fact, let me just jump down here, because we've been talking about work here. Now, let's talk about rest. Now, one of the first places I want to show you is down here in chapter XX... I, I think that's 22. Mm -hmm. um, if you would, read verse 1. Then Adam said to God, I dry up in the heat. I am faint from walking, and I don't want to be in this world. And I don't know when you would take me out of it to rest. So Adam is interested in rest. Right. He didn't got kicked out of the garden. He's walking around in the heat and all of this. He's like, man, I missed the garden. How long are you going to leave me in this world? I'm ready to go back to the garden. Right. Mm-hmm. 
And I would advise you guys to read these because we were really looking for the word rest, but you know, restoration and all that had, and those other words have, you know, that root word. So they could be talking about this as well. Um, but let's just come all the way down here to, I think this is chapter 62 now. And because it's talking about rest again, okay. matter of fact, start at verse one, but going through the two. Then came the word of God to Adam and said to him, Oh, Adam, as to what you said, bring me into a land where there is rest. It is not another land than this, but it is the kingdom of heaven where alone there is rest. So this rest that Adam was talking about earlier, mm -hmm. this word of God, and I wish we hadn't skipped over that so fast. Mm -hmm. The word of God told him that the rest that he seeks is going to be the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven. Yes. So this points back to the millennial reign mm -hmm. because that's what the kingdom of heaven is. Rest. This, this period of time where the Messiah, our master, our father actually rules the planet. Mm -hmm. This 1000 year reign. Mm -hmm. If you will go to verse three, but you cannot make your interest into it at present, but only after your judgment is passed and fulfilled. So now he's got to be judged, right? right. Mm -hmm. So, and this is kind of what we've been going through for right. these last years. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, go on to verse four. Then will I make you go up into the kingdom of heaven? you and your righteous descendants and I will give you and them the rest you ask for at present so here we got it yes I mean we ain't got to go much further I mean mm -hmm. I hope you do we got a wealth of more information to share we're going to mm -hmm. give you some details on how we take advantage of this and all of that mm -hmm. but there is the answer there how this curse is ending right. so it's over it's about as you were just they think about it Adam is looking forward to this rest mm -hmm. and this rest comes in the year 6001 or something like that mm -hmm. well we had the sabbatical year beginning in the year 2022 the fall of 2022 right so there's no work in that year right and then we have the jubilee year beginning in the fall of 2023 mm -hmm. and then there's no work in that year mm -hmm. and then of course we're expecting a so-called rock to come out of the sky sometime around that time to uh uh basically turn Mount Olivet into a crater like we read about over in uh, the book of Daniel. I think it's chapter two or something like that. Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Right. And so you can imagine there's not going to be much working going on when all of the buildings have been shaken down. Mm -hmm. And you hear about, you know, the sun being darkened and the moon not giving its light. Yes. To me, that seems like a huge dust plume that's covering the earth after this, you know, this rock or this meteor that hits this uh, uh, over there in the Middle East. And then you have all of the volcanoes and all of this stuff going, throwing dust up in the air. I believe that's about three years of darkness mm -hmm. before we get to the year approximately 2028, which will be th about the year 6001 or something like that. So I'm going to have to look at my chart again. But here we are. There is no work from now on to then. What, what, what work are you going to be doing? Right. I mean, you got about six months of work left. And again, you got the Sabbath day, then a Jubilee day, then the Judgment Day, which is the rock hitting the planet, and then three years of darkness, and then the Millennial Age start. Take, uh, Adam's curse is over. It ended. That's what all of these, you know, pestilences and, you know, all of this stuff is about. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, people act like it's a pandemic. It might not be man's pandemic. It mm -hmm. might be our father, <laughs> yeah, you know, for the cover this time, because a lot of people are, you know, having to leave work um, because of this. Mm -hmm. And this is important for the conversation. Um, you guys stick around. Like I said, this is important to this conversation, but I do want to keep going in here because I saw something really interesting in this as I was doing this study. But before we get down there, let's check out these other verses. Let's see what verse 5 and 6 has to say. Verse 5. And if you said, give me the water of life that I may drink and live, it cannot be this day. But on the day that I shall descend into hell and break the gates of brass and bruise in pieces the kingdom of iron. So what is that talking about? When did he do that? Remember, this is the word of God talking now. Mm -hmm. So that should be a hint. When did, it, when did the word of God descend into hell? And break the gates of brass. That was during the Messiah's time. Yeah, when he when they put him in the tomb, that's right. what he that's what he was doing down there. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why it took him so long to come back. He had some business to take care of. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Look at look at verse six. But, then, but notice right here what he's saying here that he will give. This is when Adam will receive the water of life. Right. So what is the water of life? 
Is that baptism? Absolutely. Don't we get reborn in baptism? Right. So that's what the word of God was telling him is that when the the word was made flesh, you know, it's written, you know, it was Adam was kind of hearing this then. Mm -hmm. But but he was promising Adam that he was actually going to see this word walking around. Mm -hmm. And when he did, he was going to bring this water. Well, the Messiah brought baptism a way for us to basically make ourselves pure again in a state where we can at least contemplate the idea of entering into this rest. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Look at verse six. Then will I in mercy save your soul and the souls of the righteous to give them rest in my garden. And that shall be when the end of the world is come. Yeah. So talking about the end of the world, the end of the world as we know it. Mm -hmm. Right. And but notice right. He says the souls of the righteous. Right. Right. So these are the ones that are expected to go into this garden, mm -hmm. this garden of Eden kind of place that we call the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's look at seven. And again, in regards to the water of life, you seek, it will not be granted you this day, but on the day that I shall shed my blood on your head in the land of Golgotha. Notice there that he says, put my blood on your head. Right. I'm sitting here reading that. What does that mean? Don't you remember when they was about to crucify him and then people said, you know, uh, crucify him. Something about they wanted their blood. Let his blood be on us. Oh, or something like that. yeah. On me and my children. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, that's what it was said. You mm -hmm. know, they, they may not have known what they were talking about, but mm -hmm. that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Read verse 8. For my blood shall be the water of life to you at the time and not to just you alone, but to all your descendants who shall believe in me, that it be to them for forever. But you can't remember the Passover wine and all of this, you right. know, because he also said that was his blood, too. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you got to remember the verses that how he turned water into wine. Yes. You know, this is some serious stuff. He, he had this well planned out. Yeah. Yeah. He seems as if this was planned from the beginning. Um, Absolutely. And everything uh, corresponds with now, then, and um, even right after the world was formed and Adam was in the garden. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So that was our father's plan for Adam's rest. Mm -hmm. Right. But I saw this down here in chapter. I believe this is 56. I don't know my Roman numerals like I should. But when I was doing this search, I saw this one. Go ahead and read this one. Verse six. Asked him to make you a body like the one I made you or to give you a day of rest as I gave you or to create within you a reasonable soul as I created for you or to take you from here to some other earth than this one, which I gave you. But, oh, Adam, he will not fulfill even one of the things he told you. So here is Satan's rest. Right. He's talking to his ass. Go ask Satan for some rest. He, right. You know, and. Look down here, verse 9. Then God said to Adam, If only there had been this sighing and praying before, before you transgress, then would you have rest from the trouble in which you are now. So Adam messed up his rest mm -hmm. and kind of putting himself in Satan's rest. Well, when we get down here to chapter 60, 60. It, it's Satan's place of rest. I couldn't go no farther in that. When I saw that right there, all I could do was laugh. Really? I mean, after you read the book of Adam and Eve and you find out how the interactions between Satan and Adam and Eve, they're, they're, they're almost hilarious. Mm -hmm. He like killed them like 20 different times, yeah. you know, it's, and so I'm sitting here thinking on what Satan's, I'm trying to remember what Satan's rest was like and all I could do was laugh. <laughs> I bet Satan's rest has something to do with what we read over in Revelation chapter 14, mm -hmm. uh, down there in verse 11, read that. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast in his image, and whoso receiveth the mark of his name. So this will be the other guy's rest. Right. The ones who are not righteous. Remember that word? Mm hmm So... Because it is only the righteous that can expect the Father's rest. Right. So this will be Satan's rest here, mm -hmm. day and night. Mm -hmm. And I thought about this for many years. Why are they working day and night? And now that we're here, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, my mind immediately went to, it's talking about work. Yeah. As a well, society now, we are constantly working. We're constantly bu busy. There's um, just everybody's always doing something. Yeah, and you believe that's what you believe. 
I'm thinking. I, I, I believe we haven't seen this yet. You, okay. I, but just like we haven't seen the Father's rest, mm -hmm. I believe we haven't seen this rest either. It's, it's to come, right? When, when the Father brings his rest, I believe the way this is going to look is after the rest of us have sat down and decided we're going to take advantage of this rest, those who are in rejection of this rest will continue to work. Mm. And now they got to make up for the rest of us. Mm. The, you know, they've been working three and four jobs mm -hmm. or, you know, working around the clock because there's nobody else. Okay. And so these people have no rest whatsoever. The boss is like, hey, I need you back down mm -hmm. here right now. And they're like, hey, I just left 10 minutes ago. I haven't made it home yet. And you need me back down there? Right. Mm. I believe that's what Satan. But anyway, I hope I never find out. And one thing that can help assure me that I will never find out is the third testament of the Bible. Okay. Because we're actually going to start talking about this rest. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to say we want to talk about the rest. We want to actually tell them how they, we're supposed to take advantage of the rest. Right. Well, why know about something if we can't use it? Yes. That's like knowing about the lottery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of makes you feel worse, right? <laughs> but anyway, rest is a big deal. It is. Um, we are commanded to rest, and we hear that the Father also rested. Yeah, and then you look at the curses of Adam, which was all about working and toil and tilling and sweat of the brow, and then all of a sudden he doesn't have to work anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a really big deal. Right. Well, anyway, we're going to jump down here to chapter 4 of the Third Testament. Um, it's called Teaching Through Divine Manifestations. Mm-hmm. And we're going to come all the way down here to verse 26. If you would, read that. Although only a few have listened to my teachings, it is sufficient because tomorrow they will offer testimony to their brethren. I know that if I were to summon everyone, the majority would not listen because they are too occupied with their daily task. They would deny me and prevent men of goodwill from listening to me. Well, now, look at here. Mm -hmm. So, we're talking about this pandemic. Mm -hmm. Well, the father's saying that there's very few people that are listening to him. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Very few people that are reading the Bible. Very few people even heard of the Third Testament of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Very few people that are paying attention at all at this time. And it says that because they're too occupied with their daily tasks. Yes. They're working. Yes. You know, busy. and busy. Um, and then it says these same people will go on to deny him mm -hmm. and prevent men of goodwill from even listening to him. I believe that. Right. So it is necessary that these jobs go away. Yeah. Mm hmm. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Hesitantly yeah. so, mm -hmm. but go on to 27. In these humble places where I manifest myself, I am allowing the seed of my doctrine to germinate. I have united those with simple hearts into groups. After they are free from their everyday responsibilities, I speak to them of love, of the eternal, of the spirit, and of true human and spiritual values. I have made them perceive life through their conscience and not through their physical senses. Now, I ain't here to knock nobody about what they're doing in their life. I don't believe in telling grown people what to do. Mm -hmm. But I do have a responsibility of bringing this out, mm -hmm. what he's saying here. Mm -hmm. And in verse 26, he was saying basically having a job is bad for your spirituality. It works to deter you from having a connection with me in verse 26. And then now there in 27, he said that once you get rid of that job, then he will come and he will come and he will start communicating with you. You're mighty quiet on that, don't we? I'm quiet because I know it to be true. But like you said, you can't tell grown folks. What well, that ain't what we're here to do. We're here to. Yeah. You, 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 we're only here. You only here to to tell. You know, this is what the word is saying. You didn't say it. The word is saying. Oh, and, and the thing about it, I ain't gonna worry about the people with the jobs because, mm -hmm. like it says right here, they're not listening anyway. So I don't need any, you know, pity in those guys anyway. And, and Jacob's trouble is over. A lot of this play play going away. It's time to start bringing the truth. We was never supposed to work for men. We decided we wanted a king. And the first thing he told us when we when we wanted a king, that king was going to he was going to work us and he was going to take our stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, here we are being worked and he's taking our stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, this plan that we detached to have a king has to go away along with these daily tasks and these responsibilities. And right he's right here. What he says after they are free from their everyday responsibilities. After they get rid of these Daily responsibilities, daily tasks, after these jobs go away. After, he says, I speak to them of love, of the eternal, 
of the spirit and of the true human and spiritual values. Yeah, and I can I can attest to it. This is part of my testimony. Yeah, I know we're saying it, but that's all I'm gonna say. You know, I'm, no, you what, I'm say saying because... I'm saying that because a lot of people are going to say. Yeah, you might be in that situation where you don't have to work and all this other stuff, but I'm a single parent and I got children to take care of. And yes, I know the father loves me and he's going to take care of me, but, you know, he's not going to pay my rent. And, you know, you know how people people are. And when you start talking about people not having their jobs, it's always a sticky situation. But I do believe that um, everything you're saying is true. Uh, we stepped out on I guess we were pushed out on faith and we did it. And I, you know, it made a world of difference when you stop being tied to that daily responsibility, that daily, um, daily task, you can, and you will, um, hear from the father more so. Well, yeah. You, well, the thing is you will hear from him at, at all based on what I'm seeing here. The way I read this without trying to water it down or anything, what it's saying here, as long as you got a job, you have a spiritual disconnect. You are disconnected. Yeah. You yeah. ain't got no connection. Yeah. Your connection. You, you, it's, you, it's, it's disconnect. It, there is a break somewhere because, um, it's just so hard because there's so much other responsibilities. You, it's it's just so hard, and um, yeah. You have to have it. Let's go on and see what verse twenty eight says. <laughs> I refer to these individuals as my disciples. As his disciples, since they were poor and not acknowledged by their brethren, they experienced great satisfaction when I summoned them. They resurrected to a new life and rejoiced at my teachings. Since the Lord has given them his revelations and, his, and has shown them the path of love, they strongly believe that they can help their brethren. Yeah, that's the best thing ever happened to me with losing that job. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I never look back. You know, um, I wouldn't go back now, you know, for pay. I mean, it was a nuclear power plant, you know, and if they needed me there, because of that purpose, sure, I'd run back down there and help them. There's going to be a prayer warrior in the control room, you know, trying to stay ahead of some of these calamities that threaten the lives of several hundred thousands of people around this plant. As we're looking at future Fukushima moments throughout the whole nuclear power industry, this is going to be a mess. Anybody that knows anything about nuclear power or watch the Fukushima deal on the on the news knows that that's going to be a horrible moment when the earthquake shakes down these systems. Mm -hmm. Well, if they called me in for that purpose, sure, I'll run down there. You ain't got to pay me a thing. But as far as, you know, a paycheck, that's over. I don't I I I am separated from that. And just like it says here, resurrected to a new life. Rejoicing in these teachings, mm -hmm. and it is the and it is his provisions now that are sustaining me and my family, mm -hmm. my whole family, mm -hmm. and so I never have to look back. So this is proven what it's saying here. But we ain't finished yet. Go look at verse twenty nine. Some will reject and ridicule them because they call themselves disciples of Jesus, but truly I say to you that in spite of the rejection and ridicule. They will continue being my disciples. And what makes them the disciple is the fact that they are separated from the worldly system, just like the 12 disciples were back then. Mm -hmm. You know, they had jobs, fishers, mm -hmm. uh, fishermen, uh, tax collectors and other things going on. And they mm -hmm. dropped all that mess and followed the Messiah. Well, that's what we're expected to do in this time. Mm -hmm. If we I can hear in your voice, you know, that some people could be hesitant about doing so. But, you know, we read the scripture to show ourselves approved. Right. right. I guess I'm hesitant because um, me, some people might be or have the same mind, mindset that I had at one time when we uh, well, stepped away from, you know, our, when you stepped away from your job. And my mindset was, what were we going to do? How are we going to do this? But we were able to do it by the grace of the Father and 
it's not as hard. It, there were hard days. Oh my God, there were plenty of days where I, you know, just couldn't understand. But in the long run, as we sit here now, you know, I don't think I would probably let you go back to work either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, <laughs> because and I, just because of it's just so much better. Well, yeah, and you know, just just as an aside note, I believe it may have been more difficult on you or maybe both of us. Like we said earlier, we we were expecting our father to come similar to the way the world does, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. through money, through yeah. this, that, and the yeah. other. And he doesn't come that way. Not at all. You know, he doesn't use, mm -mm. I mean, mm -mm. money. You quit your job or you leave your job or the father calls you off your job and you wait for him to come as money and material things, mm -mm, I'm telling you right now, go back because that's not the way he's going to come. Anyway, let's go on. Let's look down here at Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. Okay. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And I think people can hear that in our voices. Mm -hmm. That you kind of despise the Father's way of doing things because we are serving the wrong master. It just don't make sense. Mm -hmm. You, It don't make, just like it doesn't make sense. We, we, let's play good cop, bad cop. It don't make sense for me to serve that master over there just like hypothetically speaking it doesn't make sense for you to serve my master it don't you, you're like i don't know how you're gonna eat i don't know how you're gonna get clothes i don't know this and i don't know that that don't make no sense to me mm -hmm. and so you end up saying bad things and even turning people away like like the scripture said over there we have to be really careful because we can end up like it says down here in this verse they the people who love their jobs will be the ones who will deny me and prevent men of goodwill from listening. Mm -hmm. So they, these people are, are standing in opposition of him, his word and everything, even going as far as to tell other people, no, you don't want to get in pursuit of the father and his will, even though the promises of the Bible are rest. Right. The millennial age is all about rest. These same people who love their mammon, love their jobs, love their stuff are the same people who are rejected the mm -hmm. kingdom of heaven. I agree. But anyway, let's come back and let's look at verse 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on is not the life more than meat. And the body and raiment. This is the Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. This is the first time the Messiah had a speech yeah. to the people. Mm -hmm. And this is in the Sermon on the Mount. This is one of the first things he tells them to do. Man, don't worry about your food. Where are you going to get clothes from? What are you going to drink? Right. Mm -hmm. He says he will take care of that. He goes on to talk about the birds of the air and the fowl and how everything is taken care of. Mm -hmm. So what he's telling his people, his disciples... Right. That you don't have to worry about this, and we all live in proof. Mm -hmm. We we all we I make YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. You know I don't have an income, nor am I worried about an income. Right. You know mm -hmm. somebody sent me ten dollars by PayPal the other day, and you know I tried to give it away to somebody else today. Yeah. They they, did, they realized that I only had ten dollars. Like, no, nah, <laughs> wait a minute. I'm better off than you are. You keep <laughs> ten dollars, right. but you know I know that the Father's going to provide for me. Mm -hmm. You know so. Even the stuff I have, it, you know, if somebody else needs it, you can have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I know he's going to take care of me. But what I really want to bring out here is how we always knew this. Yeah. This is nothing new. That mm -hmm. on the Third Testament may be bringing out more detail here mm -hmm. and there, but we've been told this the whole time. This is part of our first instruction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you say, you, 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 you're you going to play devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. So the person who's sitting back saying, okay, well, I believe. How do we make this work? Right. Then now we're getting into the important stuff because a lot of people are in this situation and they seriously say, how do we make this work? How right. do you take advantage of this? Mm -hmm. Some of them, they're at home because, you know, this, that, and the other anyway. Yeah. And they would fully love to take advantage of this, seeing all of these things coming. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, let's go over to the book of Isaiah, chapter 58. Okay. And let's read verse 13. Verse 13. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, 
from doing that pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thy own ways, nor finding thy own pleasure, nor speaking thy own words. Okay, so he's saying if. Mm -hmm. And I said a lot of times, if is the biggest word in the Bible. Yeah. It, it, it is the most, it, is, big. it mm -hmm. is the biggest word because you see right there in verse uh, 14, it says, then if you will do this right. and what is he saying? Uh, matter of fact, let's come down here. We'll come back up there to what he's saying up there because, you know, verse 14 will lend some importance to what he's saying up there. And we'll mm -hmm. pay attention a little bit more after we understand verse 14. Right. Let's go, go there. Then shall thou delight thyself in the Lord. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob, thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. it. Now, we've done detailed classes on this verse, but for the sake of time, one verse that I want to call out to you is the promises of Jacob that we read about over in Genesis chapter 28. Right. Mm -hmm. You see right there in verse 20, how Jacob is making a vow. Mm -hmm. Right. I read that. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. Those are the promises of Jacob. Mm -hmm. We are Jacob. We made this promise here. This is the promise on mm -hmm. us. This is what is talking about. Jacob's trouble is over. We're starting to receive this promise. Mm -hmm. But what does he say here? He said, our father will be with him. Mm -hmm. Right mm -hmm. now. We understand that he's a spiritual being right. speaking to us through our conscious, our dreams and our intuition. Mm -hmm. Like we run out, read about it in the third Testament of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Then he says, and he will keep him in the way. Right now. We understand the Messiah was the way. Yes. Yeah. So he may have been pointing to that, but he says the way that, that I go. Mm -hmm. So he's keeping him on the path. Yes. And then he says, and we'll give him bread to eat. Yes. And raiment to put on. Food and clothing. Now, how important is this stuff during the tribulation when every wall on the planet will be smacked, will be shaken to the ground? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it don't make sense now. And that's why so many people are rejecting it. They like food. You know, we got food stamps, mm -hmm. clothing. We got we got uh, stimulus checks. We don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. We can get it anytime we want. Right. Well, you got to understand that the day of the Lord is coming and our government's not going to be able to help us, nor are they going to want to. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you got to understand after the earth shaking, then there's the war, right? And part of that three and a half years of darkness, war is included in that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so having this promise on our life is important, even down to the basics of life, protection, uh, raiment and food. Yeah. What's missing? Uh, shelter. Shelter. But you got to remember the Messiah said, what did he say? The birds, birds of the air have no place. To... What is it? Birds have a nest and mm -hmm. the foxes have holes, but, but the son of man, man has no place to lay his head. Yes. Yeah. So, hey, yeah, I'd rather be under a rock with my belly full than, you know, out in the house starving to death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? And we also we have to remember that in this period of time, um, the people, um, you know, they slept outside. Yeah, uh, it was Under intense. the stars yeah. and under the tents. And yeah, so... But anyway, let's come back up to this promise now. It seems more important now. This mm -hmm. if is a bigger deal. Mm -hmm. Like I said, if is the biggest word in the Bible. Right. We want all of these blessings, these protections. And what, did, what, what was that other thing he said down there? That I come again to my father's house in peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And where is our father's house at? Over there in Uzbekistan or Jerusalem or somewhere? Mm -hmm. No, he's talking about this garden, mm -hmm. right? He's talking about, you know, coming back home, home, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He's talking about the kingdom of heaven. Right. So let's come back up to verse 13 and let's take it a little bit slower. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath. Turn away thy foot from the Sabbath. And we could probably get a better translation than the King James. Mm -hmm. But what, what is it saying there? Well, let's come over and let's look at the international version. You know, as part of my testimony, this is how I learned how to read the Bible. <laughs> yeah, the first book I was told to read was Proverbs, but I didn't right. understand the King James. Mm -hmm. So I literally put two Bibles side by side and I would have to read one verse in mm -hmm. Proverbs and then go to the international version right. and understand what it meant. And by the time I got, you know, little ways, I didn't need the international version 
anymore. Right. I understand mm-hmm. it. But anyway, when you look in here at the international, it says keep your feet from breaking the, the Sabbath. Sabbath. Yeah, right. and, you, and you know we sh- could have figured that out. Mm-hmm. You know, well, he's not. Def- he's, he's not, not saying, telling us not to do the Sabbath. Oh right? yeah, not tell us to run from the Sabbath. Right. Mm-hmm. But then it says, and from doing thy pleasure on my holy day. Right. You know, so that's football games. Yeah. That's, um, you know. Going to the store or or, or, or going shopping. Well, we know that those are, no, those are violations of the Sabbath. Sabbath. He's not saying keep the Sabbath. That's what the first thing says Mm -hmm. when he said don't break the Sabbath. Okay. That's, that's a whole nother thing. That's, that's bottom basic thing. Okay. You know, we're, a lot of us are keeping the Sabbath. We're mm-hmm. not going out of the house. We're not shopping. We're not cooking. We're not making fires. We're not playing husband and wife games. We're, mm-hmm. not, we're not doing a lot of stuff. But that is not going to get us there. We're going to find out here. Okay. That's, so from doing that pleasure on the, on the Sabbath. That's something different. Okay. You're, you're not invited. I can sit down and not break the Sabbath day. All I got to do is sit still. Mm-hmm. You know. If I don't know what to do, I'll, I, you know, just, you know, do as little as possible. Right. But now that it's saying pleasure. Um, this is not the day to break out the Nintendo game and, and sit there and watch invite, movies invite you all guys day. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He's basically trying to, the Sabbath day is a day for him to spend time with us, to communicate with us, to heal us, to, to, you know, this is his day mm-hmm. that he's, that we spend with him. Right. Well, if we're doing our pleasurable acts, it's not going to, it's not going to be able to get in there. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, if, you know, we like playing bingo, we're going to just play bingo on a Sabbath day. He's not going to be able to, right. to, to get to us like he needs to, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. like we need him to. Right. And then what does it say? If you call the Sabbath a delight. Now then- here's the big one. Right. This is the big one. Like we said, mm-hmm. everybody keeping a Sabbath. At least the people watching this video, they keeping a the Sabbath day. Mm-hmm. But are we calling it that a uh, delight? I know for me, when we first, you know, started this walk, I was ready for it to be over with. A lot of like, people are. When is the Sabbath going to be over with sitting there watching the clock? Yeah, we had um, one of our relatives to accidentally visit us on the Sabbath day and had a little car trouble. Mm-hmm. And, you know... I'm sitting there looking at their facial expression as they're, you know, waiting oh. <laughs> for the Sabbath day to be over. And it's like, mm-hmm. you know, no, we're not going to work on your car. And no, we can't even <laughs> talk about working on your car. And, you know, so they just sat there as if they was, you know, halfway misery, mm-hmm. you know, sitting there on the Sabbath day. No, they were not calling it a delight. Mm-hmm. So here comes the work. The first ones are kind of easy. Mm-hmm. Don't break the Sabbath day. Don't do no pleasurable thing. And like I said, that's just sitting down. Right. But now it's saying, uh, call it a delight. Yeah. Now, now it's gonna take some work. Yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, I'm, is he just saying just call it a? It's a delight, mm-hmm. or does it really have to be delightful? Right. Mm-hmm. And as part of my testimony, I remember the day when I understood this, and we ran around making sure we were doing stuff to make it a delightful day. Mm-hmm. A lot of good things, a lot of great things started to happen to us. In fact, we started to get those promises that we see down there in verse 14. Right. So mm-hmm. I can attest that this is true based on my own testimony. But anyway, it says, call it a delight, the holy of the Lord. Right. Mm-hmm. So you're making this a very special day, which, like I said, it takes effort, honorable. Right. A set apart day. A mm-hmm. set apart day. Mm-hmm. Um, and shall honor him. Mm-hmm. This kind of stuff takes work. Not doing thy own, own ways, ways, nor finding thy own pleasure, nor speaking thy own words. words. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, but speaking his words or, mm-hmm. you know, reading his scripture or stuff like that. Right. But mm-hmm. it says, then thou shalt delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride up on high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob, thy father. Conditional. It's if, definitely absolutely conditional. If and then. Now mm-hmm. that's, you know, that's one thing we need to get out of this is that, you know, just because this is going on don't mean that we're going to be on the good side of this. Mm-hmm. You know, and this is why you guys come to Coach in the Fight. We, you know, actually to subscribe, you know, we try to put this information out as, you know, as the Father, you know, gives it to us. Right. Some of this stuff is important. Mm-hmm. Little verses that we missed, you know. Uh, how do you get protections and food and stuff through these tribulations. Mm -hmm. Don't be like those guys that just say, God going to take care of me Mm -mm. because he's not going to take care of all 7.8 billion people. Mm -mm. So a lot of these people are going away from him. Yeah. And mainly because they're not going to have food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not going to have clothing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not going to have protections and not going to be in the way. And they ain't going to the father's house. They going away. 
Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it speaks about in a, in my father's house, there are many mansions, and he's clearly talking about the kingdom of heaven. So a lot of things, you know, you used to talk about, that's why you come to coach and invite. A lot of times, you know, we want the truth, but sometimes the truth isn't pleasurable for us. But, you know, um, it's still the truth, and right. we still need it. That's what he was talking about earlier when he said people ain't listening. Mm -hmm. You know, it ain't pleasurable with a person who right now is successful. That that man that's sitting beside his wife right now listening to this. He's got his arms crossed. His lips is tighter than a bull's button fly season. He is angry because he is <laughs> contemplating the, the idea of not having to, you know, not having a job and not, you know, going down there and making that money. Mm -hmm. it, it don't make sense to him, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah, I can agree. But. You have to understand that, you know, we are here now. This time that we live in, you know, is a very serious time. Right. And, you know, it's, it's like the days of Noah where we have to be ready to uh, get across this flood that we call, you know, the day of the Lord so that we can make ourselves to the other side of this thing, which we call the kingdom of heaven. Right. Well, one of the last verses I want to bring you to is over here in the third testament of the Bible. Once again, mm -hmm. looking at chapter 55, we're going to talk about the ark. Okay. Um, it starts right there in 17, but just in case this is important, let's start back here in verse 15. The day the water ceased to cover the earth, I caused the rainbow of peace to shine in the heavens as a sign of the pact God had established with man. You know that rainbow you hear about in the book of Revelation? Right. This is the same. This is some. I want to say it's the same rainbow, but what he's talking about is the covenant. Mm -hmm. Anytime you hear about a rainbow, it's talking the about covenant. A covenant. Right. Yeah, the mm -hmm. covenant. That's why he comes back with the rainbow. Mm -hmm. But go ahead to 16. I tell you now, you humanity of the third era, that you are the same ones who passed through those ordeals in which you were purified. You are soon to experience a new chaos. You believe in reincarnation? Oh, I do. Well, that's what he's saying here. Mm -hmm. he's, yeah. But look, he's talking about the first flood. Right. Mm -hmm. And he's saying these people now came through this first flood and was purified. Right. Oh, I absolutely believe we're the same people. But now we got to be purified again. Mm -hmm. This time it's going to be permanent. Mm. Well, yeah, because there's no sin anymore. Right. The kingdom of heaven, sin goes away. So whereas before we may have been purified, we got ourselves dirty again. Right. Well, now we're not going to have the chance to get ourselves dirty mm -hmm. because we will be under a real king. Yeah. You know, he ain't, he don't play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we won't be singing no jingle bells with no Easter bunnies and none of that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, look at verse 17 and understand when you read verse 17 that this word right here is actually supposed to be protect. Okay. Yeah. I, I struggled with this for a long time. Even prayed about it. It's a grammatical error in okay. here. Yeah, I've even found grammatical errors in the King James Bible. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's, let's, look, let's read that. But I come to protect the people instructed by me and humanity in general, to whom I have made myself known in this time. Listen, my children, here is the ark. Enter, I invite you. Read that last part again. Here is the ark. Enter, I invite you. I invite you. So he's telling us we're going through these chaos again, mm -hmm. a similar thing. He tells us that it's going to be like the days of Noah. Well, if you're thinking about the days of Noah, you're like, where is my ark? Mm -hmm. Noah had a big boat. Right. And I could imagine all he did was sleep in that boat as he went across the, you know, mm -hmm. that wall. He was on there for six months, over six months, mm -hmm. over a year, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was on a boat for over a year. Could you imagine how much sleeping you're doing and you're just out there on the water? How much around? rest you got? <laughs> I got a lot of rest. <laughs> you know, that day it might have been a sabbatical year, huh? Mm -hmm. Or a jubilee year. We have to look and do the math on that. Anyway, let's go on to verse 18. For you, O Israel, the ark is the practice of my law, and all who fulfill my commandments in the most perilous and bitter days will find themselves within the ark. Strong and feeling protected by the mantle of my love. Now, yesterday's class, we talked about who Israel was. Right. Yeah, we talked about many verses, but one of the verses that we talked about was uh, down here in um, chapter 39, Earthly mm -hmm. and Spiritual Israel. This mm -hmm. chapter tells us who Israel is, the right. real Israel. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you guys can check that uh, uh, video. But if you would, go ahead and read this one verse, just so we know who Israel is, who we're talking about here. When I speak of my people of Israel, the people of God, I refer to those who have brought a spiritual mission to earth, those who have made known my law, 
those who proclaim me, those who are faithful, those who proclaim the existence of the living God, those who perpetuated the seed of love, and those who knew how to recognize in the Son the word and the presence of the Father. So this right here, this is Israel. Right. It goes on to say these are those that form the people of God. Mm -hmm. That is Israel. So right. this is kind of like a checklist. Mm -hmm. So right here, he's saying that the ark for Israel is what? Practice of the law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And fulfillment of the commandments. Right. Right. The, mm -hmm. That's basically what it boils down to. Yeah. Three verse 19. Let's come back to this for a second. And to all this humanity, I say again, the ark is my law of love. All who practice love and charity with their fellow men and themselves will be saved. So here you have two groups of people. Right. You have Israel, who will be like the 144,000. Mm -hmm. You remember up there it says that, you know, they are carrying the word. Right. Right. But then down here in 19, it's talking about that multitude that no man can number. Right. And when you start to look at these two different people, why are there different requirements? Mm -hmm. Well, Israel is going to be the ones who, who have to practice the law, even going as far as teaching the law mm -hmm. but it is this multitude these white and round stones who actually still have some of this material possessions right and they're actually going to have to help these guys out correct these these first group they, they ain't gonna have nothing to share mm -hmm. as far as material possessions they got spiritual power they can pray they know the law they know the rules they can help lead us through this thing but they might not have no shoes on right you know they might not have a coat they might not have a jacket yes you know and so that's why you see down here that everybody else, the rest of us who do have stuff, we can take advantage of, we can get inside this ark by helping them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here we are. Adam's trouble is over. We're trying to get over to see this rest period, even already entering this rest period. Mm -hmm. When you think about sabbatical years and pestilences mm -hmm. and all of this stuff. Right. But we do want to see the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Well, here is our way to see, to get over there. Right. We mm -hmm. have the Sabbath day. And calling, making it a delight mm -hmm. that's going to get us the provisions that we need. Right. You know, because what good is it if we're on the ark and we don't have anything to eat? Right. There's mm -hmm. not going to be any animals on the ark this time. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so we need these provisions for us to eat. And then as we get on this ark, well, the way we do that, our ticket to get on this ark is charitable deeds. Yes. Doing charity for these guys, especially these guys that's carrying this word. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. For the next section, I want to bring Chris in. All right. Chris has helped out our channel a lot, and since this could be our last video, I wanted to make sure that his voice is heard on here. You say your last video? Yeah, well, we're having a lot of problems here uh, at the old Hillbilly Homestead. I'm, I'm going to show you this. As we was doing the video on the Jezebel spirit, I actually dropped my computer on the hardwood floor, and it's pretty much busted up now. And now the record button doesn't work anymore. I can't seem to hit the record button anymore to even finish this video. That's why we're having to do it on the phones. Right. You know, so I don't know. Maybe we'll continue to do it on the phone or I don't know. Maybe just the last video. But anyway, I wanted to make sure that you was a part of it. So let's come over here and let's look at some very important scriptures that we should have added to this video. Okay. So we're going to come over here to the uh, lost books of the Bible and the forgotten books of Eden. And we're going to look for the general epistle of Barnabas. All right. So let's go up here and let's take a look at verse 16. All right. If you would, Chris, go ahead and read that. Let us inquire, therefore, whether there be any temple of God. In this verse right here, they're actually asking the father about the third temple. Because in the previous sections, he basically put us on blast for even thinking that there will be a brick and mortar temple that he would even respect in the end times. Right. He's letting us know up here that this is all vanity. Right? Yeah. You know? That it was all a house of idols and how it was profane things were done in the temple and we still expect him to respect it. Right. Yeah. And he told us that's not going to happen. Right. And so these people are like, okay, well, will there be any temple at all? Yes, there is. And that there, where himself declares that he would both make it and perfect it. So he says, yes, there's going to be a temple, but it ain't going to be... Made by man's hands. Yes, yeah, he's going to do it. For it is written, and it shall be that as soon as the week shall be completed, 
the temple of the Lord shall be gloriously built in the name of the Lord. See, Chris, maybe we should have did this whole chapter because remember how I was talking about the Sabbath day and what it means? Right. But if you come down here to verse, go back up to verse 4. Let, let's go back up to verse 4 where he's talking about this week. Okay. Consider, my children, what that signifies. He finished them in six days. The meaning of it is this, that in 6,000 years, the Lord will bring all things to an end. So, that's why we keep talking about 5994. Right. Yeah, and next we're going to hear a song that was actually written about that number, 5994, by the Rock Ibar. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so... We can see all of the excitement because Barnabas is saying when we get to sit after 6,000 years, it's over. Yeah, and we're right on the cusp of it. So let's go to verse 5. For with him one day is a thousand years, as himself testifieth, saying, Behold, this day shall be as a thousand years. Therefore, children, in six days, that is, in 6,000 years, shall all things be accomplished. All things, and that's what Daniel was talking about over there when he was talking about the 70 weeks. Mm -hmm. The 70 weeks are about to come to an end. Jacob's trouble has already ended. The, the, and, you know, here's Adam's curse about to come to an end. We're about to wrap this thing up. Right. But anyway, let's come on back down to... Um, we are on 17 now. All right, let's go to 17. I will find, therefore, that there is a temple... But how shall it be built in the name of the Lord? I will show you. So here he is about to show us how to build the temple. Go ahead. Before that we believed in God, the habitation of our heart was corruptible and feeble, as a temple truly built with hands. Right. So before we were believers, we, had, we were temples, but we were corrupted. Right. For it was a house full of idolatry. Idolatry. A house of devils. Devils. Insomuch as there was done in it whatsoever was contrary unto God. Contrary. But it shall be built in the name of the Lord. Talking about this temple. It's going to be built. Even though the, our temples are now disgusting. Right. Corruptible. Full of idolatry. He says that he is absolutely going to build his temple. And when you look over there at Peter. Peter told us that these temples were going to be made out of stone. But he didn't tell us what kind of stones. Right, and for that you have to go over to the shepherd of Hermas. That's where we learn about the stone. Right. All right, let's go. On. Consider how that the temple of the Lord shall be very gloriously built, and by what means that it shall be. Learn. Okay, so he's about to tell us. Like we said, the shepherd of Hermas talks about the temple and, and gives very great detail about the temple. Tells you. How you can get in the temple and what will cause you to get thrown out. Absolutely. So, you know, that's a very important book, guys. Probably the most important book as we're headed into these end times. I would suggest that you read The Shepherd of Hermes. At least listen to the audio book or something like that because we got to get that message. But anyway, let's see what Barnabas says about this temple. Having received remission of our sins and trusting in the name of the Lord, we are become renewed being again created as it were from the beginning. Wherefore God truly dwells in our house, that is, in us. So this is how this works. Right. This is absolutely, verse 21 is how this thing works, and it ties into everything that we've said so far about this rest. Mm -hmm. you got to remember that we started off in the garden, spiritual beings that was in touch with our Father any time we wanted to be in touch with Him. But because of the transgression. Adam and Eve was cursed and banished from that spiritual state, kicked back down here to earth where they had to till the ground and eat the food like cows do. But this curse is only supposed to last for 6,000 years and then we're supposed to return back to the garden. Right. Return back to the rest. That's what Barnabas, that's what all of these books are saying. Is that if the 6,000 years return back to the rest, well here in verse 21 he's given us very specific instructions. What he's saying, having received remission of sins. Yeah. So you have to understand what that's pointing to. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do a search for remission sins and see that there are eight times the word remission and sins are used in the same verse. I think we only need one when we come to Matthew chapter 26 and look at verse 28, which says, For this is my blood of the New Testament 
which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So what this is telling us, or what this is pointing to, is Passover. Right. He's telling us that the way we get back into this temple is to become pure again, and the way we get pure again is to get our sins remissed or canceled out. Right. That's done every year at Passover. It's done the first time at baptism, but nobody is expected to get baptized every year. Mm -hmm. So the way the Father has set it up, after you've gotten baptized that first time or second time or third time, or you, you, and you've dirtied yourself up ag yet again, because we're all sinners and we do make mistakes, every year we have the opportunity to take a spiritual bath and cleanse ourselves, cleanse our temple, so that we can become that temple again. Mm -hmm. So this is part of the way back to the garden is through Passover. That's kind of like the door back to the garden. Right. And trusting in the name of the Lord. Alright, so we're in similar to 8. And if you would, read verse 24. Now this law is the Son of God, who is preached to all ends of the earth. The people that stand under its shadow are those who have heard his preaching and believed. So when he says we have to trust in his name, he's saying that we have to trust in the law. Right. So all of this keeps getting tied back together. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go back over to the book of Barnabas. Because verse 21 says, Having received mission of our sins and trusted in his name, we are become renewed. So those two things, trusting in the law and being baptized, is the way back to the garden. Right. Then it says, being again created as it were from the beginning, which is like we were in the garden. Mm. And then it says, wherefore God truly dwells in our house, that is, in us. We become the temples, and these temples dwell in the garden, no matter where we're at on the planet. These two are the most important things. We already gather back to him in this temple, and we do so through the garden. Well, Chris, looks like we got it working again. How? I actually, I think I ended up having to put a new operating system on the computer. Oh. Yeah, we, we're in Windows 11. Wow. So this may not be our last video. This may be our first video, kind of. Yeah. We're going to continue to try to put videos up. I mean, that's what we do. That's why this is video number 1,000. We don't mind putting videos up. Mm -hmm. But anyway, now that we have these newfound capabilities, let's go ahead and add these other verses that our father wanted us to put in here. Right. One of them is talking about the bloodline of Israel. Mm -hmm. We wanted this to be a all-inclusive video that you can get all of your information. But there's going to be people who's going to step up and say, hey, y'all ain't Israel because y'all don't look like Israel. Right. Well, to disprove this and completely disbunk that you can look at a person and tell if they're Israel or not, I'm going to come over to the book of First Kings in chapter 11 okay. and look at the story of Solomon. Okay. Matter of fact, go ahead and read verse 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidoneans, and Hittites. Yeah, so Sodom liked strange women. Yeah. Meaning he liked Gentiles. You see here all of these people, the Moabites and the Amorites. Mm -hmm. Those are the children of Lot. Okay. But you see that one says Edomite? Yeah. That's Esau. Oh. Right? So right. people are always talking about Esau this and Esau that. But he, yet Esau got Israel's blood in him. Esau too. has Israel's blood in him. Absolutely. Right? And then look at verse 2. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. So this is what brought Solomon down. Right. He, he loved these women, but you know the fact still remains. He got punished for it. But the bloodline still remains. Right. Matter of fact, let's let's see how thin this blood got. Look at verse three. And he had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. Yeah. So he loved these Gentile women. Right. And he had over a thousand of them. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a certain way you could read it. He might have had almost fifteen hundred wives. Yeah. So if you got fifteen hundred wives, how many children do you have? Well, back in their times, at least five each. Yeah, there was no birth control. 
So you can start imagining how much this has spread. Right. Right? And you look at all of these people in here, the Hittites and the Zedonians, there, Solomon has spread the bloodline all over the world. Mm -hmm. And then you think about how royalty, usually their blood gets spread all the way through the common people after a certain amount of time, too. Even the other ten tribes got assimilated into the Babylonians. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? means that they became one. Yeah, they just married, and after a while, they kept having children, and next thing you know, you can't tell their children from the Babylonians. That's what it means by they're lost. Yeah. You cannot find them because they are all mixed in with everybody else. Right. So there's no way to tell who's who on the blood, as far as bloodline is concerned. Right? So we needed to bring that out. Now, another point that we wanted to bring out is over here in the third testament of the Bible. And that's how he doesn't hold us accountable for our sins yet. Oh. Yeah. So that's why nobody's getting punished for things that we do. Makes sense. We're here in chapter 55 of the third testament. If you would, go ahead and read verse 20. I have always given you time to prepare and appointed the means for your salvation before sending you my justice to receive an accounting from you at the end of an era or phase. I have shown you my love, warning you and exhorting you to repentance, reform and the good. That's what this video is all about. This video you can consider as part of his plan. Sure, it's not the most significant part, maybe not significant at all, praise the Father, because, you know, we may not even get it up at this point. Uh, they're watching it, so we did. They yeah. can thank the Father we actually did get this video up. But this is what he means. He's sending from all different avenues. We're going to hear from the Rock Out Bar, so he's coming through the music. He's coming yeah. through the videos. He's coming through TikTok. He's coming from all avenues to do what? To give us time to prepare. Right, for this that it is to come. Yeah. You know, just like Moses came a couple of years earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't show up right there when it was time to leave. He was two years earlier in right. hanging out with the Israelites before the calamities of Egypt. Well, that's what he's doing now before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Making his presence known. Making his presence known and allowing his people to prepare. Yeah. That's the important part. But now look at verse 21. Nonetheless, at the hour of justice... I have never presented myself to ask if you have yet repented, or if you have prepared yourselves, or whether you remain still submerged in disobedience and evil. Now this is, this is a serious verse right here. Because what he's saying, at the hour of justice, this is for us, is the great day of the Lord. Yeah. For Moses, it was the um, frogs and all of the plagues of Egypt. Right. For Noah, it was the, the flood. But for now, it's the day of the Lord. But he's saying before the day of the Lord, he's not holding us accountable. Right. This is what they mean by judgment day. Because sure, we're in the judgment period. But there's coming a day when this stone comes out of the, 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 the sky and destroys our e economy and our civilizations and stuff. Mm -hmm. If we don't know how to live according to this book, we're going to die. Right. That is the judgment. Nobody's going to come to do anything to us. We're going to do it to ourselves when we don't know what to eat, mm -hmm. when we don't know when to rest, when we don't know when the Sabbath days are or what we're supposed to be doing and all of that stuff. That's going to be our judgment. We're going to be judged based on this book is kind of like a final exam. Mm -hmm. You had all the time to study the test. Now here comes the final exam when we call that the day of the Lord. Right. But it should be pointed. I say again, he's never judged us beforehand. That's why we can do whatever we want to now. I, I shouldn't say it you know, so flippantly. But we're doing whatever we want to now and he's not coming to punish us. Right. It's us punishing ourselves, but even that isn't going to so far an extent. Right. Absolutely. All right, look at verse 22. My justice has arrived at the appointed time, and he who has known to build his ark on time has been saved. So the ark we talked about is obedience to the law right. and charity for our brother, right? So this is the ark we have to be building and we looks like we have a couple of years to build this ark. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're receiving these messages now because it takes time to learn how to build this ark. Right. It, 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 the law and it even takes time to learn how to do charitable deeds, right? Right. Even prayer takes time to learn how to pray correctly. 
because you got to make sure that you get everything in. Right. Get all the important things said. Right. And so he's, this takes time. So this is what he's saying. Those who got their ark prepared on time was ready to go across. Right. And let's finish it out. While he who has responded with ridicule and did nothing for his salvation when the hour of justice was announced had to perish. Yeah. So this is for the rest of the people. Right. The ones that clicked off the video a long time ago. You know, when they came, oh, he talking about the Lord. Yeah, these are them. You had the opportunity to prepare mm -hmm. and you laughed at old coach in the fight and you went on about your business for the next two years. And Doing then nothing for your salvation. Right. But for our salvation, we have to learn to do charitable deeds. We have to learn to live within the law. Right. We even have to get some of these stains up off of us. By way of merits, mm -hmm. right? Or else we're going to have to feel the pain of the the tribulation. Yeah, right? having to pour out the cup of bitterness. And that bitterness may be thick enough to take us into the spirit world. Right. So we have to do what we can now, prepare now. So we appreciate you coming by and spending this time with us, Chris. No problem. If you would, though, I would like for you to add a blessing to the people. And then after you read that, we're going to hear a song by Darak Ibar talking about this year, 5993, and we're going to close out with it. So, as Christian finds that, you guys make sure that you have that bell notification button pushed. So, if we did put out another video, you can be sure to get it. At least have the subscription button pushed. Yeah. Our Father in Heaven, hallowed be His name. Bless you and keep you. Our Father, make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So be it. So be it. And y'all pray for us. Mm -hmm. Look, mm -hmm. 5,994. I tell him board the off before he locked the door. Light versus darkness, this the final war. It's too late to be playing, our key time is short. If we don't say it, who gon' warn him? Turn it from commandments, that's what scattered us to corners. Everywhere we go. The covenant we made is going to follow us and it's going to be a curse if our sins keep piling up. That's facts. The four corners is our address. All over the earth while the land rests. We was worshiping idols, disobeying laws. Just know them same laws going to break the chains off. So this what we going to do. Point the people to the shepherd. He going to heal the nation. Sun, moon, and stars. Feet in their proper place. If we follow him, we going to survive this tribulation. It's a narrow path, everybody ain't gon' make it. I ain't saying I will, I but don't play favorites. No respect to persons, I don't do it. He got several servants. Tell him watch your back, stay on point. These devils lurking, who is that man? Will he hear with a message for the seven churches? Was he the man on the river back in Daniel 12? Nebuchadnezzar threw three men inside the flame. They looked in and saw another man standing there. The Holy One, the seed of David. Break free, flee the matrix, repent and be baptized, I'ma keep it basic, written in stone, they'll never erase it, we that generation. Messiah's come.